to remember Allah. الذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات سبحان الله Allah describes those who are cognizant of him remembering of him are those who do it plentifully and that's really the only condition when it comes to the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other than it being in the leanings of the teaching of the Prophet اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا be excessive, plentiful, abundant, multiple compounding in your mention and your, your remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does the word dhikr mean? Well, it's a really important word. It kind of goes back to the very nature of who you and I are as human beings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes us as human beings. We are the children of Adam. But the description that we have been given in the Quran, one of them is called al-insan, the one who is prone to forgetting their place with Allah, forgetting that we we were accountable to him, forgetting our relationship with him, forgetting to worship him as he deserves, forgetting to thank him for all of the blessings we have, forgetting that we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even for the things that we have not been hurdled with and, and tested with in life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes our ancient father Adam alayhi salam by saying in Surah Taha, وَلَقَدْ عَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ آدَمَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَنَسِيَ وَلَمْ نَجِدْ لَهُ عَزْمًا I have given an, in, an instruction and a covenant made a deal with Adam alayhi salam that if he was to worship me, if he was to maintain his obligations to me, he would have eternality and happiness in Jannah, Fanesia. But he forgot the promise that he had made to me, Walem Najid Lahu Azma. And I did not find in mankind the constancy, that perseverance, the azm, the ability to endure that I wanted them to develop. And therefore, you and I, we, we need to know that as a part of our deficiency as human beings is that we forget. Nansa makanana ma'Allah. Nansa ayyamana ma'Allah. We are forgetful of our days with Allah, forgetful of our place with Allah, forgetful of our obligations to Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us rusulan tatra, sent to us many prophets, many messengers, Mundirina wa mubashirin to warn us and to give us good news. Why is it that they are warners and givers of glad tidings? Because they are to remind us of Allah's Jannah and to remind us also of the territory and the humiliation of the punishment on the Day of Judgment and the enigmity of Jahannam. May Allah protect you and I, all of us from it. Allahumma ameen. So that becomes a really important first step. The dhikr of Allah, the main intent behind it, when you make mention of Allah, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, is not the only form of dhikr. It's not just the oral remembrance of Allah. It is in fact begins in the heart. And as we've learned, most of the actions of our character development, worship of Allah, and the attempt to gain righteousness and birr and virtue with Allah begins in the heart, takes root with the tongue, and is demonstrated in the actions of the body. So the dhikr begins in the heart, that I am hadir al-qalbi ma'Allah, that my heart is aware of its place with Allah, that my heart is observing of its climate with Allah, that I am cognizant of my deficiencies, seeking to increase in the good, seeking to lessen myself from the wrong and the sinfulness that I practice, that I'm a person who wants to embellish my righteousness, flourish in my good deeds and my good conduct, and I want to limit my misbehaviors. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's firmly established in the mention and the scriptures of Allah. So Allah gives the Qur'an and the previous scriptures that were received the title and description of a dhikr. And Allah describes our Qur'an sent to our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I have revealed and brought down by my order the angels have carried to you the dhikr, this ever, ever important remembrance. And I have ordered that it be protected and guarded until the day all of you will return to me for judgment subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an awareness of the heart of our dealings with Allah. And then it is reinforced by the mention of Allah. And whenever you love someone, you talk often about them. You mention them, you speak of them, you share uh, news about them, and you increase your preference and your prevalence of it with other people. Therefore, the command of Allah is to make mention of Allah plentifully with the tongue. What is its effect? Well, 
The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a cure to that which is in the heart. And the best of dhikr of Allah is the Qur'an, the words that Allah sent to, the, uh, sent to us through our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu It is titled and referred to as a dhikr al-hakim. And in it are, of course, the sequence of eloquent ways of praising Allah. In the Qur'an, you will hear the word Subhanahu, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah. Listen to the very opening chapter of the Qur'an. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It is with the name of Allah that I begin this reading. Who is he? Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. I praise him, I thank I thank him, I acknowledge him. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He is the always forgiver, the merciful, the compassionate. He is the one who is Maliki Yawmuddin. I acknowledge that I remember there will be a day I will stand before him and he will be the master of my judgment. Iyaka na'bud. Oh Allah, I make this vow, I make this promise. Only you, O oh Allah, will I worship. Only you do I ask help from. For that reason, because I've made this covenant with you, ihdina. Lead all of us, not just me, to the straight path, a path of balance and truth and favor and virtue. غير المغضوب عليهم. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم. The path of you, those who you favored before me, who you led to the right path before me. غير المغضوب عليهم. Not the path of those who have angered you because they learned the truth and walked another way. ولا الضالين or the path of those who have turned blindly to your instructions and didn't want to hear it from you. O oh Allah, Amin. O oh Allah, answer this du'a. And therefore the dhikr of Allah, its greatest mention is the Qur'an. That is where we get all of the other forms of mention. وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ The greatest mention of Allah will happen in your salah. And therefore when you read the Qur'an in the salah, that becomes the greatest remembrance of Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ, he says, if you want to enter al-jannah, أَكْثِرُوا الصَّلَاةَ أَكْثِرُوا السُّجُودِ Increase your prostrations, increase your prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It makes you, as you stand before the Almighty Allah, you understand that you will stand before Him on the Day of Judgment. As you bow down to the majesty of Allah, you understand that He is the totality of support for you. As you make your sujood and prostration to Allah, you understand no one has power and governance over you but Allah. To Him is the mulk and the sovereignty of all the kingdoms. And therefore, I love no one more than Him, I fear no one more than Him, and I will obey no one as I obey Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase my remembrance, your remembrance of Allah. May Allah increase the quality of our remembrance of Allah with our heart, with our tongue, and now finally with our actions. The greatest display of your remembrance of Allah is that you enjoin what is good, you forbid what is evil, you practice it in your home and in your conduct, and you seek to share it with all those who live amongst us and surround us in society. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our mental of him in our hearts, in our tongues, and with our actions, in our demonstration of faithfulness and belief in him. Wa salli Allahumma wa sallim, wa zid wa barik ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your brother Yahya Ibrahim, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.